Welcome to another episode of Wayne's World Garage. Last video, my wife said it was kind of boring. She got tired of watching a saw go in circles and circles and the chainsaw go. So I thought we'd try something a little bit different this Memorial Day. And to give you a little picture of the, the Dodge Power Wagon we have. And uh, take a ride in the Power Wagon and see how she goes. So first, uh, we'll do a little explanation. It's a 1956 version of the Power Wagon. Dodge made them. They made them with the same body style from 1946 all the way up to 1968. Um, a lot of it was made with parts from military vehicles that were left over from World War II. Um, it's a one-ton truck. It has an eight-foot bed, and it's a four-wheel drive vehicle. Very uncommon at the time. Not many trucks were four-wheel drive at all. This was probably the first real truck that was actually four-wheel drive. The market for this truck was actually for farmers. Uh, they tried selling it to farmers because it could be your truck to work in the field, and it could be your truck to go pick up straw, fertilizer, whatever you had to do in town. Um, this truck is relatively stock. The uh, out of the box, the gearing on this is 583 to one, which means the realistic top speed is close to 35 miles an hour, okay? One of the upgrades we did is we changed the tires from the bias ply tires, which were absolutely horrendous, to these gorgeous Michelin tires. And these are Michelin XZL tires. These are uh, 37 and a half inches tall, um, 50 pounds each of pressure in them. And these tires are much, much better. Now, one thing to keep in mind when riding these trucks, as I've learned recently, if you look at the wheels, people say, well, does it shake? It still shakes a little bit. Run out on the wheel from the factory was 150 to 2 thousandths of an inch. What you mean by run out is this distance here, it goes wobbles out and back and forth. The reality is when you're working the farm field at 20 miles an hour or down a dirt road, it didn't make a whole lot of difference. So everyone wants to drive these at 60 miles an hour today and that's just not very realistic. Okay. Um, the other modifications I've done to this is I've changed the uh, oil filter. It had the little sock thing here, which was absolutely horrendous. And every time you changed it, you had to stuff this big sock in it, which I don't think it did anything. And I, the old dog ate all my dirty socks, so I didn't have any more filters for it, so I got rid of that. Um, we rebuilt this engine some years ago, about six years ago now, and when we rebuilt it, um, the crankshaft was cracked. So Eggy Machine Shop out in California happened to have an extra crankshaft. Uh, it was ground 20 under for the rods and 20 under for the mains. And uh, the pistons in this thing, we wore it out about 30 over um, just to clean it up. It had been rebuilt before we got it. We rebuilt it one more time. The other modifications you'll see on the engine is an external or a remote reservoir for the brake fluid. And these are really, really challenging to bleed. You pump the brake once or twice, and it runs out of fluid and you get air in it. This little assembly right here um, connects to it. You have to have, use um, a special gasket made out of what they call EPDM rubber, the top of the master cylinder. But now I can remotely you know, add fluid and I can remotely okay bleed the cylinders because i unscrew the cap and i pressurize it additionally uh, we put power steering on this the power steering makes it a little bit more drivable um, lastly people are talking about the points going bad all the time well you know it is 2021 um, i ran it with the points for a couple weeks after i rebuilt it but throw those things out and get a protronics get electronic ignition if you intend to drive this on a regular basis without screwing around with changing points and everything else that's going to go bad on it. Let's walk around to the other side a little bit. On the other side of this, it looks pretty complicated. Um, it's called a square top carburetor, okay? And it is a fairly complicated carburetor. People took them and threw them out because they couldn't figure out how to make them run right. Um, fortunately, there's a couple people around that can rebuild them. Dimitri is his name. Does a good job and it looks gorgeous too. What some people don't notice is this mechanism here. This is called a King Sealy Governor, and more about that now. You'll see it's not connected right now because I don't want to spin the governor and have it working or do anything when I'm not needing it. So I take the belt off it when it's not in use. But the King Sealy Governor, with all this complicated linkage arrangement, governs the engine speed. Okay, so it's like an engine speed governor for 1946. Now, why would you need that? Okay, if we go to the back of the truck, this truck has an option which was available back then, and this is called a belt pulley. And if you look at any old farm tractor, it's got a belt pulley on it. And if you take 
the belt pulley and remove these four bolts right here, these nuts, this slides off and it's a standard PTO shaft for a tractor. So it'll run at 540 RPM. They did have a three point hitch with it. Um, they're very, very hard to get. There's only a couple people that have them that I know of and they got destroyed. And the, the reason they get destroyed is because while this may sound like a good idea to use it as a, as a tractor towing something in the field, it's really not very good because a turning, turning radius is more like a football field instead of a tractor where I can use turning brakes, lock up one tire and basically spin around in 20 feet, 10 feet. This thing doesn't turn, so I assume they destroyed most of them. I do have a, um, a hitch coming pretty soon, I hope, um, which should be um, not quite the three-point hitch, but it'll help us tow things, little light things, at least pull things like hay wagons, um, things like that. And finishing the little walk around here. Um, I've had this truck over 10 years. Probably the biggest uh, biggest mechanical challenge I've had on it when I got it was when I first got it, I was struggling to get these lug nuts off. And anybody that's my age or older already has got it figured out. It's a Chrysler. Left hand of the truck has left hand lug nuts. You turn them left handed to, to loosen them up. What? I don't know what they were thinking, but they were thinking it would work a little bit better if you did it that way. Who knows? Um, on left hand side turn them left but i got into this and i'm thinking boy i can't even get the tires off anyway it's worked out what have we done to the truck uh, the engine's been rebuilt the transmission is um, a new process np420 that's been rebuilt the uh, transfer case np200 that's been rebuilt on the front of this there's a winch and the winch is called a braden it's an mu2 it's a 10,000 pound winch it's got a massive cable and a massive chain on it I've never used it for real. I use real winches today. Um, this thing is scary and sketchy. Um, you need a man inside here who can hear you, who's gonna be on the clutch. Because the clutch is what makes it go forward and backward and stop. And if you're 100 feet away and somebody says stop and he's uh, drinking coffee or lighting a cigarette, you're gonna have a little bit of a problem. So it's a Braden MU2 winch. They sold lots of these with the winches. What you're hearing here though, is this truck gets a little bit complicated, okay? So the base price of this truck was $2,449. Okay, um, not the average Joe could buy them. And if you look at a two wheel drive truck with a five and a half foot bed, it was a lot less money. So the people who were buying these were fire truck companies. They were people who did rigging, they did logging and heavy equipment. A lot of people put gin poles on the front of them. Okay, the truck weighs about 5,600 pounds as it is right now. Um, the other options it has um, with the front tow hooks, and uh, I think that's about it. Air conditioning, um, it's 230 air. Two windows roll down at 30 miles an hour, and that's all you can get. This was not an option, it came with it, it was a little cowl vent to add a little bit of cooling there, and that actually works pretty well. They were men back then, and they were tough. It's not meant to get groceries at Wegmans and Whole Foods, but it's a little bit different than that. The good news is, parts are relatively available for these, uh, thanks to a couple people who are manufacturing some uh, replacement panels for them, for the bed panels, doors now, windshield frames, and they're equivalent to OEM. Um, you really can't tell a difference, and, and that's a good thing. Um, I just want to thank some of the folks who have helped me here on this thing. Uh, my buddy Doc Dave has helped a lot with some advice. Um, Clint Dixon, Todd Summers, Dave Horvath, they're the masters and know all about these governors and know all about these PTOs and stuff like that. There's not a lot of people that know about them anymore. Fortunately, I hope that I've learned a little bit. And if anybody wants, I can tell you about it. Quick looking underneath this thing. First thing we see is the NP420, new process 420 transmission uh, with a power takeoff. This is the power takeoff here. Um, and that's, of course, goes directly you know, two, the power takeoff goes directly to the front winch, the Braden MU2 winch. And sorry, if you get a little bit dizzy, the back of the power takeoff, it's got two drive shafts and that goes to the rear power takeoff. Um, and so the NP420 transmission here, you're gonna get dizzy, but that's okay. Um, one, one drive shaft here, two here, or one here, two here, one here, one there, one there. So you got six drive shafts, so you kind of learn how to rebuild U-joints on drive shafts. Uh, it has a two-speed transfer case. New process makes that. It's called an NP200. 
and it works pretty cool. It goes direct, it's not coupled, it's called divorced. It's got a drive shaft which goes to the transmission. And now the transmission, um, there's another modification I did. It goes to a, a Laycock overdrive unit. And that's what this little silver thing is here, is the overdrive. And frankly, it goes about, I can get 50 miles an hour up on it pretty reliably on a consistent basis without any problems. Um, out of the box with the short tires without the overdrive, uh, 35 is pretty quick. Um, and it's screaming at 35 miles an hour. Interior truck is pretty bare. Speedometer, oil pressure, that's about it. Voltage and fuel, not a whole lot going on in there. And the windshield wiper controls. And uh, they're, they're pretty simple. Um, we did put seat belts in here at the insistence of my wife. Um, but the reality is um, the seat belts are somewhat hilarious because uh, you know at 50 miles an hour if you hit a tree there's four bolts holding the whole cab on and uh, probably a chassis will stay in one spot near the tree and the cab will go flying with you in the seat belts so I don't know what they do besides make the wives happy so we did put uh, seat belts in it and uh, the bed of these things uh, when it came from the factory had um, had white oak wood in them so we replaced it with white oak although theirs was painted black because who would make it look like this other than people like me so we made it look a little bit better and uh, that's about it how about we take this thing for a ride now okay we're about ready to get going happy memorial to everybody this is a 1956 dodge power wagon it's pretty simple inside we got the speedometer oil pressure water temperature amps and then uh, the gas tank down below you've got the gearbox transmission You've got high range, low range, and you've got the power takeoff, which we talked a little bit about. If you look at this, it claims it top speed is 52 miles an hour or something. That's ridiculous. It'll never go that fast. Um, I put this little speedometer over here and there, a GPS speedometer, to give me a much better clue of how fast we're going. So to start it, it's got three pedals since it's a standard transmission. So you got to push in the clutch, put it in neutral, turn the key on. It's been running. So maybe it's a little bit of choke. And then we're good to go. And uh, from here, we'll let it roll. I always start out in second gear, it's low enough here. Watch out for my puppy dog in front of us. Usually it moves. Come on, Inky. Thank you, Inky.
a lot of stuff and that's how he fixed the things in the truck. That was a failure. He fixed all that when he rebuilt the engine and right now the temperature drops up all the time.
thanks for watching this. We appreciate it. If you like this stuff, subscribe. Send me a note if you give me some feedback and tell me what you like, what you don't like. Thank you so much and happy Memorial Day. And remember, it's not all about the beach. It's about honoring the men and women who have died for us, protecting our nation. Thank you so much for watching.